Hello everyone, welcome to Raw Online. So in this session, we are going to start out by trying to uncover a new system. So we are going to be discussing on rheumatology. So all these sessions of this module are going to be uh, focusing on discussions around various rheumatological disorders and we are going to start with the prototype multi-system uh, rheumatological disease which is the SLE, systemic lupus erythematosus. Now, let's start off by trying to understand what this disease is. Now, systemic lupus erythematosus is a multi-system autoimmune disease in which the organs and cells undergo damage mediated by the autoantibodies which bind to the tissues and also mediated by immune complexes. So, basically, these autoantibodies and immune complexes, what happens? They join hands together and they are going to result in significant tissue damage. And that is responsible for all the clinical features of SLE. And because this tissue damage occurs in several systems, you are going to see clinical features across several organ systems. So, that is what results in significant organ damage. So, this is what SLE is about. Now, um, SLE is actually more common in females than in males. So, uh, the risk of SLE in females is 5 to 6 times as high as what is observed in males. So, this is largely a disease of uh, females who belong to the reproductive age group. So, more than 90% of patients with SLE actually belong to this uh, category of patients. So, they are all women, more than 90% of patients with SLE are women who belong to the childbearing age group. And most often it is found that uh, these patients have antibodies uh, for quite some time before they start developing clinical manifestations. So, in this disease, autoimmunity far precedes the onset of clinical manifestations of the disease. So, how does this work? How does a patient develop SLE? Now, several predisposing factors have been associated with onset of SLE from genetic defects, uh, particularly uh, defects uh, in the genes which encode the early complement components like C1Q deficiency or C2 or C4 deficiency. Genetic if defects which affect antigen presentation, for instance, HLA-DRB1 or DR3 mutations. Defects which enhance the innate immunity, including production of interferons like TNFA, IP3, uh, IT GAM mutation, ICAM mutation and finally, um, defects which alter adaptive immunity in such a way that your B cells are going to be producing autoantibodies like BANK1, STAT4 mutation. So, all these genetic defects. So, certain defects associated with a very high risk of SLE, particularly defects which uh, result in deficiency of early complement components like C1, Q, C2, C4. So, remember these. So, in addition to these uh, defects which can affect the innate immunity, defects which can affect antigen presentation, defects which cause the B cells to produce autoantibodies antibodies all are associated with a high risk of SLE. In addition, there are a few genetic mutations which are associated with a very high risk of specifically lupus nephritis. So, not just SLE, but these mutations are associated with a very high risk of development of lupus nephritis. What are they? HLA, DR3, STAT4 and APOL1. So, even if you can't remember the others, remember these three. So, just like how C1Q, C2 and C4 deficiency is associated with SLE, similarly STAT4, APOL1 and DR3. So, this is 1, 4, 3 rule. So, these are associated with uh, lupus nephritis. So, remember APO, L1, STAT4 and DR3, HLA, DR3. So, these three uh, mutations are associated with lupus nephritis. In addition, there are several environmental factors which have been linked to uh, SLE from exposure to UV light to smoking to exposure to crystalline silica to EBV infection to female gender, they are all associated with SLE. And finally, certain epigenetic modification like uh, hypomethylation of DNA or microRNAs which affect genetic expression are all associated with SLE. So, what happens? Basically, patients develop one or more of these risk factors and these risk factors are going to result in altered immunity. So, they are going to bring about an abnormal immune response which is going to generate a lot of autoantibodies. 
Now, these autoantibodies are responsible for the tissue damage and inflammation. And this inflammation is responsible for all the clinical features of SLE. And when the inflammation is going to go on for quite some time, with time what happens? Long-standing inflammation is going to give rise to organ damage and that is responsible for the more serious uh, concerning um, end organ damage that is seen with SLE.